when I first met John. I think it was uh, the slightly roguish air he had about him that I think I was attracted to. And I think it was just, he was a bit different to anyone I'd met before. And he also looked rather like Steve McQueen. <laughs> we had 47 wonderful years. I was hoping we could have made the 50. I would have liked to have done that, but uh, that wasn't to be. Uh, we came out of the doctor's surgery and he just said, it, it's cancer, and I said, right. And there were tears, and I said, well, look, I said, what, what, whatever we have to do, we're going to fight it, and we'll fight it together. So we, we just left it like that, and I think we actually went to the pub for a drink. That was our way of coping with it. One of his passions in life was walking, walking on the Black Mountains, beacons, anywhere really. I mean, he loved it, and of course it got to the stage where um, that wasn't possible and he could only manage a, a short walk. I think that was probably the only time I ever saw him get really annoyed and upset because he couldn't do that. The nurses were lovely, they would, they would come every week or every two weeks, so we had an awful lot of support from them. But it was our GP who suggested to myself that maybe it would be a good thing for John to go to the day hospice. He thought he would benefit and that I would benefit because it would give me a day where I could perhaps go and do something else. And actually, he loved it. He was felt so comfortable there. He got to know some of the staff and some of them very well. So when the time came when his condition deteriorated, he told me that when it, you know, the time came, he would like to go to the hospice. He was used to going there and very hard to put into words. It was sad, but it's not a sad time because they are so wonderful there. And the fact you could go and we visited with all the grandchildren, they go and see Gramps and, and then they go and play in the pod with the toys. There are no restrictions, no time limits on visiting hours or anything. You almost feel privileged in a way that we were there, we could say our goodbyes, we could just hug him. So it does help you because you know you couldn't have done any more. Everything we did and the hospice did together couldn't have been bettered. I knew that he was happy to be there. And if somebody dies in that way, I think we are lucky because we are there. And it, it is, yes. The hospice doesn't just abandon you, there's so much that they continue, the support and the love that they give you when you've lost a loved one. I mean, I used to go to Hand in Hand, which is a, it's a group for carers, but John used to come with me because it was obvious for those you cared for as well. I don't think a lot of people know about all the other things that, that are there. And after John died, there's a, there was a sort of a spin-off of Hand in Hand becomes Out of Hand. Uh, for those that have attended Hand in Hand. And, and it's a group of ladies and, and there's some men as well. And we meet once a month. It's a social occasion. We talk about all sorts of things. And again, if anyone's feeling a bit down, you, you know, you can have a word with someone else because they're experiencing as well. I actually did the Venus Challenge for the first time last year, which was a few days after John died. I felt I was doing something positive and, and giving a little bit back to the hospice. And so this year, when it was actually on the anniversary of, of John's death, it seemed even more appropriate to do it. And what was rather nice this year, that they'd reduced the age limit, so my eldest granddaughter, who's nearly 14, was able to join us. So we had granddaughter and her mother and then me, the grandmother, and then my other daughter and a daughter-in-law and a friend. And so we had our team JB and had a wonderful evening, really. And I think, again, it helped me because I, I could have sat at home and felt really sad and unhappy, but I was out there doing something positive, raising money for the hospice and, uh, and awareness for the hospice. And, and then it was a fun evening as well. 
It is a bit like a big girls' night out, like a huge hen party. But there's one factor that sort of links us all together, and you've only have to see notices or photographs or wording on people's backs that everybody is doing it in memory of somebody, either relational or somebody they knew. So there's that common factor that binds us all together. But we're having fun as well. It's quite unique. It's a great band of women suddenly surging out into the town. We've got 751 of you here this evening, which is wonderful. Well done, guys. Brilliant. Thank you very much for coming. And you all look great in your flashing gear. It looks a fantastic sight. Can't wait to see it when we go out in the dark. One of the loveliest things, I think, this year was they had the, the candles in the little candle bags. And then these candle bags were taken by the volunteers down to the cathedral and they were lined round one of the little walls. So you had this lovely little line of all these lights. And then in the garden, they had the trees where we could hang our messages on labels and they were all lit up. And that was very special, that lovely touch. Some people might feel guilty, but I think a good way to remember somebody is perhaps in a fun way. And I know John would have laughed from here to I don't know where, the fact that we were all dressed up in a funny way and raising money and awareness. I mean, what better way could you celebrate somebody's life? He wouldn't want me to be sat at home moping. You know, he'd much rather I got out there and got on with it and, and did something. And this is really why we did it. And of course, this year it was even more important to do it because it was the anniversary of his death. So to go out there and, and have fun, whatever I do in, in his memory, I do because I'm celebrating his life. Thank you.